The new allegations against John Diddy Combs, a music producer, is accusing hip-hop mogul of assaulting him and forcing him to have sex with prostitutes. But a lawyer for Combs called the events described in the lawsuit pure fiction. This is now one of several assault lawsuits filed against Combs in recent months, including a lawsuit from the R&B singer Cassie that was settled last year. Now, now, Fifth, when you continuously call Puff gay, does that affect no. your relationships in Hollywood? I don't call, no, I don't call, I don't call him gay. I said... Let me read it. Let me read okay, it, read. Fifth. Oh my God. Sorry, I can no longer Shane's help confused. you guys. Soon you will all be gay and happy. You are all now left under the leadership of Puffy Daddy. Report to the nearest rainbow. Then the thieves in theaters. Oh, that's what I was talking about. Then the thieves guitar. Yeah, that's yeah, that's come up. <laughs> Whoa. It looks like Brother Love is having a hard time keeping his name out of the headlines because he is racking up lawsuits left and right. Now, hear me out. We all know about the Cassie lawsuit and all the speculation that's been going around Kim Porter. But now we got some new stuff fresh from the oven, you guys. Producer Rodney Jones, AKA Lil Rod, is coming forward with some wild allegations against Diddy, suing him for supposedly SAing him. Now hold on, that means Diddy is gay? And that's not all. In the 70 plus page lawsuit, he is claiming that Puff Daddy was allegedly involved with Porter, SA, Tushin, the list goes on and on. Now that's some next level type And folks, we got it all. Even 50 Cent is chiming in on the whole drama. I mean, if this all turns out to be true, 50's gonna feel real good about himself. He's been calling Diddy and his fruity behavior out for years. Lil Rod is even dropping names like Meek Mill, which I don't think comes as a surprise to any of us. I mean, we all remember this clip, right? Hey, what's up, King Son? Man, you doing it, man. You deserve it, Daddy. You putting in that work. Proud of you. I love you. Yeah. So, let's get into the good stuff. Music magnate Sean Diddy Combs was hit with a new lawsuit recently in the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York. NBC News reported the plaintiff turned out to be a former record producer and videographer, Rodney Lil Rod Jones. In the lawsuit, Jones explained that he started working under Sean when he was hired to produce some of his songs for a new album. However, he claimed that Sean had a devastating impact on his life. The defendants in the case are not just Diddy, but a whole group of his social circle. As far as defendants, there are a number of them. There's Diddy, his son, Justin Combs, the CEO of Universal Music Group, the CEO of Motown Records, which is the parent company of Love Records. There's a woman named Christina, who is the chief of staff to Diddy. There's Motown Records, Universal Music Group, Love Records, and some others. So there's a lot of defendants. Jones is openly accusing Combs of crossing boundaries, alleging inappropriate behavior from September 2022 to November 2023. He claims to have evidence, both in video and audio formats, showing Diddy and his crew involved in serious illegal activities for over a year. This revelation came to light when Jones shared that he frequently crashed at Diddy's place for months, working on music. However, these visits took a turn, with Diddy allegedly making unwelcome advances. Rodney, feeling frustrated, brought the issue up with Diddy's chief of staff, Christina, but she dismissed it, attributing Diddy's actions to his personality. But Rodney wasn't about to drop the mic just yet. In his hefty 70-page complaint, he spilled that Diddy attempted to lure him into engaging in intimate activities with another dude. According to Rodney, Diddy pushed him to do some downright inhumane stuff, making it seem like it was just the industry norm. And let's talk about the industry for a sec. Stevie J got dragged into this lawsuit and not in a good way. Rodney detailed in his complaint how he had looked up to Stevie J for years, but things went south when he got mixed up with Diddy. Let's break it down for y'all. We all know Diddy's been the top dog in the industry, and it's no secret he's got some serious connections. The dude allegedly didn't hesitate to use those connections to convince Lil Rod to get close and personnel. In the lawsuit, Lil Rod spilled that Diddy used his admiration for Stevie J's work as bait and supposedly sent him videos of Stevie getting into some shady stuff. According to TMZ, Stevie J kept it short and real when addressing the accusations against him. The reality star told the outlet, these allegations are false, and my lawyer will be handling this going forward. In a move straight out of the Love playbook, Sean Love, in a statement from his lawyer Sean Holly, flat out denied all the claims. Diddy threw shade, saying Rod was just trying to score a quick $30 million, calling the whole thing a made-up story. Diddy's gearing up for a battle, swearing he's got solid proof to back his innocence, though not much of it's hit the media. And get this, 
Diddy's legal team says they've been trying to reach out to Lil Rod's lawyer, but it's been radio silence on the other end. While Team Diddy claims they're all about showing evidence, folks can't help but wonder if they're trying to convince, or maybe even throw some shade at, Rod to drop the lawsuit. Diddy's own flesh and blood, Justin Combs, dropped a statement too, slamming those wild claims as downright false. He straight up called it a move by someone desperate for a payday, taking drastic measures. Justin laid it out, saying Rodney's gonna face legal consequences for dragging the Combs family through the mud. And if you thought Rod was done spilling the tea, you're in for a ride. In the lawsuit, he dropped a bomb. At a July 2023 listening party in Mr. Combs's Cali crib, he got handed shots of tequila spiked with who knows what. The legal papers don't spill who handed him the shots or how he got pressured into it. Jones claimed he knocked out after downing that drink and woke up butt naked at 4 a.m. with an adult worker passed out beside him. But that ain't all. He's throwing shade at Diddy, saying these special drinks went around at Diddy's shindigs, even hitting underage girls. And here's the kicker. Jones is pointing fingers at young Miami's cousin and actor Cuba Gooding Jr., accusing them of crossing lines. Unlike Diddy, Rodney's shouting from the rooftops that he's gonna bring the receipts to court. His complaint spilled the tea like this. Throughout his time with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones witnessed, experienced, and endured many things that went far beyond his role as a producer on the Love album. Mr. Combs required Mr. Jones to record him constantly. As a result, Mr. Jones has secured hundreds of hours of footage and audio records of Mr. Combs, his staff, and his guests engaging in serious illegal activity. The lawsuit pointed fingers at Corum, claiming he played a role in helping Diddy push him into a relationship. The legal docs painted a picture of Jones being downright scared of Mr. Combs. It seemed like he felt trapped, unable to say no, with Combs supposedly throwing around his influence in the music game and even with law enforcement. The lawsuit dropped the bomb that Diddy allegedly tried to spook Lil Rod by flaunting his firepower. And get this, the legal papers threw in a claim that Diddy straight up admitted to Lil Rod that he had a hand in the fatal 1999 shooting of a rapper named Shine. The whole crew is now facing accusations of teaming up with Combs, making gains off his supposed crimes in what they're calling a RICO enterprise, basically organized crime. The complaint stated, the members of the RICO enterprise all share a common purpose, to enrich themselves financially and S at the expense of producers, musicians, writers, creators, and artists by maximizing defendant's revenues through fraudulent means. Defendants benefited financially from their scheme to defraud plaintiff by intimidating plaintiff with threats of violence, threats of isolation from the music and entertainment industry, threats of non-payment for work completed, fake promises of cash payments, producer of the year, Grammy awards, and guaranteed access to future projects. But aside from all the other stuff, Jones has stated that he wasn't even paid fairly for the alleged year-long work he did for Diddy's album. So much time, um, you know, months and at, at, at a time, 16 hours, 24 hours a day. Um, sometimes, you know, Diddy would request certain works to be done and tell us don't go to sleep until it's done. And, and the truth is we'll be up for days trying to accomplish that. I've tried to get my business straight with them on this album, but the truth is they're not playing fair. They, they hit me on below the belt. During his rant, Rodney explained that he had to go above and beyond to meet Diddy's alleged unrealistic demands, but the money they paid was a fraction of what he had put in. The Art of Dialogue reported that Lil Rod released a video of Diddy laughing about stealing his publishing for the work he did on the Love album Off The Grid album months before filing the lawsuit. It looks like Diddy never planned to pay Lil Rod for his work. Many fans believe that this might be the real reason why Rodney decided to bring up receipts of Diddy's so-called freak-offs. Hey, cause I run shit. Yeah, thanks, I, I run shit. Yeah, you do. Yeah. Lil Rod ain't worth giving this kingdom to if you don't control his publishing. I can solve his efforts with three other human beings. He's eating at our table, and I like his backstory, but you need to have other people. We, it's hard to work with him unless we have his power. He's a piece of shit, man. Adding to the pile of troubles, Jones's lawsuit cracked open a box of speculation about Diddy's romantic preferences, claiming he's been getting close and personal with folks of the same gender. Now, the buzz around Diddy's orientation isn't new, been lingering for years, but Diddy's always painted himself as a straight dude. Well, Jones is singing a different tune. In his statement, he spilled that Diddy straight up told him about getting intimate with a Philly rapper who once dated Nicki Minaj 
and an R&B singer who rocked the Super Bowl stage and owned Vegas with a residency. Now, those are pretty clear signs, pointing fingers at Meek Mills and Chris Brown. And instead of stepping up to bat against these claims, Meek Mills pulled a move, dropped the news about a new album, and wiped his social media clean. Left just one post hanging that looks like it's gearing up to accuse Diddy of some shady stuff. People especially on Twitter have been going wild over these new accusations, and just how we know them, they dug into this stuff themselves. Seems like Meek slipped up because he got caught red-handed following some shady male pages, if you know what I mean. While coming to Meek Mill's defense on his podcast, DJ Academics appeared to accidentally let the cat out of the bag, inadvertently supporting the claims made in the lawsuit. He did not, it, it did not say Meek Mill name. Wait. Oh, oh, hold up. Never mind. Wait, what the f I forgot. Look, Mr. Combs informed Mr. Jones that he had engaged in intercourse with rapper five that's redacted look five he's a philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki minaj yo meek after the whole situation blew up meek took to twitter with a series of tweets he strongly asserted that since he wasn't explicitly mentioned by name in the document he has no ties to diddy's mess in his words here's the doc let's go on trail live playing with my name find the page where my name mentioned and what date so I can get my credit card and show you the date where I was, I don't even know that P, but let's go to trail on here. However, in the midst of this, he didn't hold back in targeting DJ Academics for live reading the document. Meek called out Academics, accusing him of playing games with his name. Through a series of tweets, Meek threw shade at Academics, claiming various things like being an alcoholic fully powered by the white man. Interestingly, Meek eventually acknowledged the allegations of him having an intimate relationship with Diddy, as implied in Jones's lawsuit. He stated, I'm from Philly. I don't do substance or freaky A Molly. Nobody won't even offer me substance because I'm that heavy. No man or Watt would ever approach me about gay activity, and the whole place don't get flipped. Woke up seeing this on every blog like they know I'm coming. Lol. Responding to Meek's tweets, academics fired back, claiming that Meek rarely confronts other men who call him out. He also criticized the Dream Chaser founder for selectively responding only to him despite other bloggers discussing the explosive claims made in Jones's lawsuit. Now this n is burnt out. A producer called him and Diddy Gay. He mad at everybody and addressing everything but that said I made it up. Although nothing has been proven yet, most fans believe that there was a romantic relationship between Diddy and Meek. I knew something wasn't right when Meek was hopping like a bunny for them. White folks on the tennis court better not. That's not something you agree to. The lawsuit and the presented evidence are shining a light on Diddy's allegedly fruity side, in the words of 50 Cent. Now, 50 has a history of calling out Diddy for what he perceives as his gay antics. And if you follow 50 Cent on Instagram, you know he's not shy about throwing shade at celebrities. A few years back, 50 targeted Combs in a particularly provocative post, sharing a picture of himself in a hospital bed, surrounded by stuffed animals, claiming he was recovering from pettiness before dropping that bomb on the internet. He had already thrown some shade at Diddy for being at a fruity party. In his words, sorry I can no longer help you guys. Soon you will all be gay and happy. You are all now left under leadership of Puffy Daddy. Report to the nearest rainbow. When questioned about his previous homophobic comments towards the bad boy CEO while promoting his film Den of Thieves on The Breakfast Club, 50 Cent hinted that Diddy has been in the fog for so long that his real self slips out from time to time. Now, Fifth, when you continuously call Puff gay, does that affect no. your relationships in Hollywood? 50 also threw it back to a time when Diddy floated the idea of a joint shopping spree. This went down at Chris Lighty's wedding, and 50 was shook by Diddy's bold move. After Diddy dropped the suggestion, 50 claimed he got so heated that he was practically losing it. Diddy himself owned up to proposing the shopping gig, but spun it as his way of having Fifth's back. In an interview on The Breakfast Club, Combs laid it out. Yeah, I thought he needed some clothes. I'm a nice guy. I yo, I don't have no beef with Fifth. He loves me. Y'all can't see that he loves me. You mean, hold on, you really think that's hate? When you really break it down, you've been out here a long time. You know he loves me. We're the same? No, we are not. We are not the same. We are not cut from the same cloth. I respect that. I don't hit him with, I don't even think of no other man. If I'm thinking about another man, I'm thinking about uplifting. In 2014, he hinted that Diddy, Rick Ross, and music big shot Steve Stout were caught up in some kind of love twist. He also tossed out the idea that Diddy and Empire co-creator Lee Daniels were getting cozy. 
50 boldly claimed he crossed paths with Lee Daniels, but had to keep it a bit distant. He straight up said he was in the loop about all the wild stuff Puffy had going on. 50 Cent didn't hold back on hinting at Diddy's orientation during a concert in Europe. The in the club singer spilled the tea on why he skipped Diddy's legendary all-white bashes, saying, That's why I don't be going to them Puffy parties. They can hug you from the front and the back at the same time. What are you talking about? Nah, I mean, look, if you lay into that, you into that, I'm fine with it. The is on. I'm just saying this ain't my mother down the pot. Page Six reports that 50s G-Unit Films and Television might be working on a TV special about the head honcho of Bad Boy Records. However, it's unclear if it's a one-time thing or a series. 50 dropped hints on Twitter about being the top producer for the gig. He later declared on Instagram that the proceeds from the documentary would support SA victims, seeking approval from his Insta fam. 50 proposed a docuseries titled Surviving P, Diddy or Diddy, Do It or Not, drawing parallels to Lifetime's expose on R. Kelly, Surviving R. Kelly. Just like 50, the comedy legend wasn't feeling P. Diddy. During his time on Shannon Sharp's Club Shay Shay podcast, he revealed turning down $50 million four times in his career. Allegedly, the deals had conditions involving doing P. Diddy some questionable favors. Just to protect my integrity and that virin hole I was telling you about, right? Cause P. Diddy be wanting to party, and you got to tell him no. You got to tell him no. I did. See, I got the receipts for everything. I'm telling you, that's why I can say them so freely. Me, Cat dissed Diddy, claiming he never encountered someone's wife and tried to force himself on her. He suggested such actions only occur when the other side is unworthy, and he's never felt unworthy in bed. This marks the fifth lawsuit against Diddy. The initial lawsuit came from his ex-girlfriend Cassandra Cassie Ventura, who accused him of forcing himself on her in 2018, causing years of physical harm. The lawsuit stated, Combs began aggressively pursuing Ventura, who signed with Bad Boy at age 19 and quickly catapulted to fame, inviting himself to a gathering for her 21st birthday where he forcibly kissed her and immediately exerted his power and influence. But given Combs' influential position as the Bad Boy Records founder, Ventura found it challenging to reject his advances or substances without putting her career at risk. Despite her attempts to break free from Combs' toxic relationship, she was consistently located by his extensive network of corporations and affiliates, compelling her to return. The legal dispute between the musicians was settled just two days later. Cassie later stated that she chose an amicable resolution, wanting some level of control over the terms. Now, four additional accusers have stepped forward with lawsuits. One claims Mr. Combs drugged and essayed her showing videos of the incident to others. Another woman alleges that Mr. Combs and another man took turns assaulting her and her friend in the early 1990s. Joining the ranks of those exposing Diddy is Jaguar Wright. In a candid interview with Hip Hop Uncensored, Jag disclosed that many men in the industry have experienced various forms of harassment. She hinted that figures like Diddy Combs are the ones causing misery for personal pleasure and power trips. She said, Most of the men that would qualify to be in the homo thug category were drugged, lured. This isn't about right. it's about control. Right. Yeah. This isn't about success, it's about money. Jaguar broke it down, explaining how top executives, Diddy included, are cultivating a toxic environment within the music industry. She hinted that Many of them engage in demeaning, intimate relationships with their artists to maintain control. Jaguar shared that she became aware of this dark side during a studio visit, revealing just the beginning of the disturbing reality. She went on to disclose that in the industry's shadows, it's not about talent. They seek individuals willing to satisfy their unconventional desires, trading money in return. That's the twisted equation. Talent takes a back seat to their peculiar demands. The intrigue deepens as right, a staunch advocate for exposing the music industry's shadows, spilled the beans in an interview. According to her, Diddy underwent grooming by Clive Davis, a legendary music executive, to serve as his boy toy and to recruit young artists for his pleasure. If you've heard whispers of a mafioso influence in the industry, Jag claims Diddy's ascent to the top is thanks to his infamous parties, ruling through fear and earning everyone's deference. In the interview, Jaguar exposed how unsuspecting artists are lured in with cryptic clauses in their contracts. Adding more fuel to the fire, 
she shared an incident where her friend walked in on Diddy engaged in questionable activities with Christopher Williams, insinuating it as a clear instance of Diddy seeking intimate favors in exchange for contracts. Fans believe that Rodney's story is suspiciously like Cassie's story. Parts of his story is sounding exactly like some of the things Cassie told us about them. Freak offs and all lol. And we know Diddy paid off Cassie with immediate effect. LOL so. Another added, I'm so sorry, but Diddy and everyone else in this lawsuit being potentially queer is not the problem. The fact that there's allegations of trafficking and engaging in acts involving underage children is the problem. So now that you have the 411 on Rodney and 50 spilling all the tea about Diddy's shady dealings, what do you think? Drop your thoughts in the comments. If you're vibing with the drama, give us a thumbs up and make sure you hit that subscribe button to stay in the loop. Keep it real. Stay tuned and subscribe to never miss out on any new videos. See you in the next one.